what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you my um, Facebook business manager. There's, this is nothing. There's no smoke and mirrors. This is going to be me going through Facebook ad creation from start to finish. And my hope is you will take this and whether it's over the weekend or this afternoon, implement something in your business and in your area that makes sense for you and start crushing it with Facebook ads. So uh, we're going to run through it. If you guys have questions, uh, there's a raise hand function, which will actually alert me while I'm sharing my screen. Um, otherwise, you can drop it in the chat and we'll try to try to address it later on. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen so you guys can actually see everything. So first thing I always do, go right to business.facebook.com. And I always want to make sure that I do my ads through this business manager, because if you do it through your page, you're going to run into issues. You don't get the same sort of functionality as you do. And down here, there's a button called campaigns. Oops, I'm going to go to my Ottawa Home Values page where I run most of my pages or most of my ads. So I'm on the campaign dashboard. You can see here's all my campaigns that are running right now. And I'm going to click create. I always like to do leads, okay? So this is going to allow me to collect information directly in Facebook. And that is something that is highly valuable because Facebook has an auto-populate function where they don't actually have to put their information in. Facebook does it for them. One less thing for them to find a barrier and not do business with me. So I'm going to click continue. Or I can name my campaign. Um, I actually had a really great idea that was shown to me by someone in this group. So I'm going to copy them if that's all right with Rosanna. And it's going to be uh, October 2022 price reductions. And then I'm going to name it in my city. So that's going to be how I set up my campaign. I'm going to click continue. And it's going to bring me now to the campaign dashboard. Very important. You always need to make sure that you're claiming that this is a special ads category in housing, because that's what we do. And then you're going to select your country, which is Canada for me or US for anyone else. So AB testing, leave this off for now. Advanced campaign budget. Um, you're, this is what you're going to do. This is going to come at the campaign level. So we're not going to spend more than $10 per day. And we're going to bid for the highest volume. Now your dashboard may look a little bit different than mine. Facebook tends to put different views and structures in front of different people to get feedback on how to make their dashboards better. If it looks different and you can't figure it out, um, drop a note in our Facebook group and I'll be able to address that. If you guys aren't in the Facebook group uh, and need an invite, just drop a um, you know quick invite me to the group in your chat and we'll make sure that we get you in at the end of this. I click continue and now I'm at the ad set name. So I'm going to say Ottawa price drop leads. So now I'm naming the next level of my campaign, which is called the ad set. I'm going to select instant forms. And you'll see why, because it's a really great tool that they have. And make sure my Facebook page is the one I want to run ads from. So I personally run ads from a page called Ottawa Home Values. When it comes to my individual listings, I run them from my own branded page. But any lead generation I do through a community-based page. And if you guys have questions about how to set that up, I'm happy to do that kind of maybe on the next call or something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Dynamic creative, leave this off. What it does is essentially, if you turn it on, it gives Facebook permission to spend your money faster. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it, you'll get more leads. So we're going to pick a start date. I'm going to start this for 12.05 PM. Give me a little time to set it up. Um, I always set an end date. So what you can do is let it run for like 15 days. This way, it's a it's an auto reminder to come back and check in on um, how things are doing. The next part is your audience. Now, if you've had if you have custom audiences set up, you can absolutely touch touch them in here. However, with the changes that ha recently happened with updates for the iOS system, uh, the audience have kind of been hamstrung from a special ads category. So I never do that. 
all I, I just go in and say, okay, I don't want to advertise to all of Canada. I want to advertise to Ottawa, Ontario. And I'm going to pull this in just a little bit. So that's good there. So my ad is going to reach a few people that, you know, are outside of my um, jurisdiction there, but there's always opportunity for referral, which is great. I'm going to leave the, <coughs> excuse me, leave the ages as is. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I cannot change the gender here. Now, when it comes to the detailed targeting, I tend to leave mine open. However, what you can do is you can absolutely go in and say realtor.com. You know, if people are interested in real estate, you can do Zillow. And once you get a couple things, a couple ideas in, you can click suggestions and then, you know, select whichever ones you want. As I mentioned, I think the Facebook algorithm is far smarter than I will ever be. So I'm going to let them go out and put my ad in front of people who will do business with me. So all languages. And now when it comes to placements, never do Advantage Plus placements, even though it's recommended. And the reason being is that this is going to take your ad and put it on every one of Facebook's real digital real estate assets and spend your money like crazy. I only, I only come in and do manual placements. I remove the audience network. I remove stories and reels, in-stream, overlay, search in article. I remove everything and then I go into feeds and I'm going to pick Facebook feed, Instagram feed, Facebook marketplace. And that is it. That is all where I show my ads. And I'm very happy with the outcomes that I get. The rest of them, even though I have tested them a whole bunch of times, seem to just spend your money quicker than leads come in, which is not what we're in the business for. We want to make sure that our ads are profitable. If you are running a branding campaign and your, your goal is omnipresence versus generating leads, you know, go ahead and fill all the reels and do everything you want to do. But I just want leads right now. It's important to note on the right hand side here, campaigns ad set may get zero leads. This is not true. This comes up on pretty much every single ad that I've ever run. And it's, it's, again, just Facebook's way to look through the algorithm and try to get you to spend more money. So don't worry about this. I always exit out. <coughs> I'm just going to do a quick check-in because I know we've, we've run through campaigns and, and ad sets. Does anyone have any questions yet? Can you, if you run your ad and keep the campaign budget set for all the time, are you able to put it on pause for a day or, and then go back to it? Yeah. So if you, if you, so you're saying if you don't set an end date, um, where is it here? If you don't set an end date, you can, you can absolutely go in and it's just a little toggle button back and forth to turn it on and off. Okay, cool. Yep. Yep. Um, you can absolutely do that. So uh, everyone else is good. No, no other questions there. Just want to check the chat real quick. Looks like everyone's fine. All right, let's move on because we're going to get into some of the meat and potatoes here. Ad name. All right, I'm going to do Ottawa price reduction. <clears throat> so I've named my ad. I have my Facebook page here. I'm going to select my Instagram account here. I don't need to select branded content. Now, when it comes to um, creating a visual image, I'm going to show you guys, and I love this tool. It's super simple. Canva. I'm just going to go create design, Facebook post. Okay. So I've got my Facebook post. Here's what I like to do is I like to go into elements. I look up grids. I'll find a cool little grid that can work well. Let's go with this one. Shrink it a little bit just to give some white space on the outside. Now, you guys are probably wondering, you know, where do you get your photos from? So I'm gonna show you a cool little tool where if you go to Google Images, and if I look up Ottawa House, right? A house in my area. It gives me a lot of cool ideas on what's out there right now. Now, I cannot grab any of these images from this page without worrying about some kind of copyright. 
So I go into my tools, which is located here, usage rights, creative commons license. And now these are all images that I could use in my ad without fear of um, any kind of backlash for copyright or trademark or um, any kind of claims, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna take a couple of images. That looks like a pretty nice house. Let me take that one. And I want to take images that represent kind of different parts of the city. That's pretty cool. New builds. Oops. And you guys are getting this real time, raw. I may even mess up along the way, but it's what we're here for. We're all going to learn. Maybe take a stormtrooper. You know what? I think it's, that, a cat, no less. <laughs> it's funny. So I actually know the woman who's um, who is that stormtrooper. Oh my gosh, that's crazy! Yeah. She's part of the 501st Garrison in Ottawa. A little like fun uh, Star Wars cosplay charity thing. So, quick question. Yeah. If we had our own listing that you know, like you're doing now that had um, a price reduction or whatever, we can use yeah. that picture, correct? Yeah, for sure. Um, the reason I'm not doing that is because none of, so like I have pictures of my listings here, but none have gone through a price reduction. So okay. I wouldn't want the, I wouldn't want the the client to necessarily see that online. And all of a sudden they're like, well, hey, whoa, we didn't do a price reduction. Um, so I, I tend to use stock photos for most of my ads. But you're you're more than welcome to add your own um, your own images in your ads as well. Okay. Good question though. So what I've got going here is you know similar looking houses. I got a new build. I got kind of an old one, and then you know a bungalow. So different style of houses, and I think these are going to do a fairly decent job of standing out on the algorithm. Sometimes if you wanted, you could change the background image, uh, the, or the background color, that'll help it sort of stand out on the white of the Facebook feed. So I'm going to go with that kind of charcoal color here. And I'm going to save this image as a PNG download. <clears throat> Excuse me. Would you brand it if you had a logo or something or not? You, so because I'm running it through one of my community pages, which is Ottawa Home Values, I'm not going to brand it with my own logo. Um, but anything that I run through my own page, I do put a little watermark on the bottom. Very, very little watermark. Um, I, I don't know if it's probably the, the orthodox way of thinking about things, but I don't tend to put a ton of value into like logo recognition people are hit with like 500 to a thousand ads every single day. So the retention is very low. I want, I want to create something that just gets their attention right away, gives them action, like a call to action, which we're going to talk about. And I want their information. And then I'll hit them with all of the, you know, here's more about my practice. Here's more about what I can do for you. Here's more about all that kind of fun stuff. So one, once I got my image ready to go, I come down to add creative. I'm going to add an image here I just drag and drop that in. <clears throat> Wait for it to load. Always do original. Don't let Facebook mess with your stuff. So there's the image part of my ad. So you can start to see the preview coming up over here. It's looking all right. And I'm going to go drop a little pin and say, attention, Ottawa. Oh, attention, Ottawa. We are super slow right now. Home buyers. Why isn't that deleting? Anyway, I'll come back and fix that. Be the first to know about Price reductions on homes in your favorite neighborhoods. 
this exclusive list is generated uniquely for you and will show you in almost real time the exact market data you are looking for. So you guys are more than welcome to steal that copy. Um, I'm just gonna figure out why that uh, isn't deleting right now. Anyway, I'll have to come back, but for the, uh, for the purpose of the drill, you guys kind of see what's going on. <laughs> so for the headline, actually I'm gonna go click below to get your updates. I like to use emojis. You guys don't have to use emojis. I don't think there's any conclusive evidence about whether they are actually better or not. Um, but I always start out my um, ads with, uh, you know, attention, target market. Headline, see price reductions in your area. Get your exclusive list now. So Facebook is going to allow you five headlines. I recommend that you use them. Um, and what you want to do is just try different ways of calling people to action, right? Click for your list. Now, today, price reductions mean opportunity for you. And let's go with one more. Motivated sellers are ready for you, your offer, okay? And then in the description, I'm gonna say something like, click, learn more, click here for your list. And I'm gonna do a right pointy hand, how do I do it? And pointing. Nope. Oh, I got to go the, the long way of actually like selecting a emoji medium. Hand pointing right. Emojipedia is a really great, uh, really great thing. If you guys like it. Boop. There it is. Now, call to action, I've always, I've tested almost all of these, or at least the ones that have made sense. Learn more continually outperforms any of the other ones. So I always go with learn more, but you're more than welcome to do your own research as well. Now, this section, there's a bunch of forms already created, but I'm gonna create a new form. I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna say, Ottawa price reduction. And then I date it for October, 2022. I always select more volume. For the intro, I'm just gonna use the, uh, use the image from your ad. I do not put a, a greeting in there, but you're more than welcome to explain um, kind of what you do and why you do it, all that fun stuff. For questions, I want a short answer question and it's going to be, what area are you, what area are you most interested in, in learning more about? Add question, multiple choice. This is a super important question. I always, always, always put it on. How soon are you looking to buy a property in Ottawa? And I'm gonna do immediately one to three months, three to six months, six months to one year, one year plus. Now, the reason I want this question in here is this is going to, this is gonna dictate uh, frequency of drip marketing, um, whether I call them right away, 
So if I get a if I get a lead coming in and they want to buy immediately or in one to three months, they're getting a call ideally within 10 seconds of submitting the ad. If it's you know three to six months, six months to a year, I'm going to put them on my weekly messages. I'm going to put them on the drip campaigns that I have set up through KB Core. Um, and they might get a call here and there based on some of the things that I, I, I follow in terms of their profile. Realistically, most people who put in one, one year, they just kind of go on to my newsletter. We'll see what happens with them later on. So I've got my two questions here. You can add as many questions as you like to make this uniquely yours. Just remember that the more questions you have them answer, the less likely you are to have a high volume of leads, but those leads will be high quality. So play around with the number of questions that you ask. There are people who just ask for straight up, just give me your email and that's it. Now, when I come down to the pre-fill questions, um, I don't want their full name because I integrate with KB Core. Um, so I want to make sure that their first name and their last name are separate so that I can create an entry um, automatically. And I want their phone number as well. So I want their first name, last name, email, phone number. Uh, and then we're going to close this section because we're done with that. Now for a privacy policy, you're going to go for the link text, you say privacy policy. And then you're going to go to your page. So mine's just set up with KB Core. And there's a privacy policy right there. I'm going to take that privacy policy. I'm going to throw it right in there. Messages for leads. So this message is shown after they have opted in. So I just say, you know, thanks, you're all set. Check your email shortly for your custom list of properties that have recently undergone a price reduction. Be sure to check your promotions or junk tab inbox um, in case the initial email went there. So from this point, I'm going to say um, a call to action is going to be a view my view my website. I'm going to send them to my website if they want to look um, at other properties. View properties on the market around Ottawa. Okay. So now if they click there, they're going to go to my website. Ideally, they're going to browse a little bit. And what that's going to do is because my website's with KV Core, it's going to feed data back into my CRM, tell me what they're looking at, what areas, what price range, all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm going to take that, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to publish my, whoop, you must let people know how they'll use data. Where's that one? Oh, it might be privacy policy area. Or something. It's, a, it's actually the description. I, ah. I, I skipped over this one. Ah. We will send your unique homes list to the information provided below. See, real time. We're all, we're all doing this together. I'm not perfect, but pretty close to it. So that's all set. Now I'm going to go publish. And it's going to let me do it. So there we go. So now my ad is ready to go almost. I just want to make sure, see if I can fix this up now. Now, there we go. I'm going to add another pin. Want to know about price reductions in your favorite neighborhoods. Exclusive list is generated uniquely for you. And we'll show you in almost real time the exact market data you are looking for. Click below to get your updates. We're all ready to go. So nothing too special. There's the ad. Um, I'm not going to add any tracking right now because everything is done through lead forms. And as soon as I click publish, it goes into review and we're off to the races. So there you go. Soup to nuts, start to finish. That is the Facebook ad creation process. It's not rocket science. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, there's a couple nuances in terms of removing Facebook's control over where your ad goes.
but this is an ad and you can take this idea, you know, and I, I generously took this idea from Rosanna and Scott, actually, um, who are in the Facebook group and it's been crushing it. I think uh, when we walked through it, you were getting like $2 leads. Is that right, Rosanna? That's right. I'm still getting about $2 per lead. Which is huge, right? So yeah. what just happen is... Yeah. So what's going to happen is you're going to get these leads coming in. They're going to be interested in a price reduction. You guys send them the list, you know, whether it's through um, whatever your board um, service is or, you know, KB Core has great landing pages. You send them that information and that starts the relationship. So from there, you have an opportunity to grow a relationship. And this is the entry point. Any advertisement is the entry point to a relationship. 